Mad Max Fury Road. This movie has been getting all sorts of glowing praise from critics everywhere. And if you were tuning into this video expecting to finally hear someone going against the grain, let me just disappoint you right now. That's not gonna happen because I fucking loved this movie. This was amazing. This is the fourth entry in George Miller's Mad Max series and is a kinda sorta reboot because it's not actually in the same continuity, but yet Max has more or less the same backstory. Really, the only major difference is instead of a dead son like he had in the original series, now he has a dead daughter. Don't know why they made that change, but there it is. Beyond that, he's still pretty much the same Max we all know and love, this time played by Tom Hardy instead of Mel Gibson, but still wandering the wasteland in his Interceptor like he does. Very early on in the movie, he's taken captive by a group of people who call themselves the War Boys, led by the tyrannical Immortan Joe, and he is taken to their citadel. This is a little oasis of sorts in the middle of the wasteland, where Joe rules over his followers much like a cult leader. And at some point, he sends one of his soldiers, Imperator Furiosa, played by Charlie Theron, out to the nearby gas town to collect, what else? Gasoline because gasoline is a precious resource in the apocalypse. Unbeknownst to Joe, she is actually smuggling his wives out of the Citadel and trying to take them to a place that she refers to as the Green Place, which is apparently where she lived as a child before she was taken. And through a very awesome and chaotic action sequence, Max gets mixed up with her and eventually agrees to help Furiosa and the wives. Mr. Joe is naturally not very happy about this, so he gathers up his full army along with some reinforcements from Gas Town and Bullet Farm, and they all go after them and chaos ensues. And it is lovely. The story was very well done. It's a very simple story, but for a movie like this, simple is really all you need, as long as it's coherent, and it is. And as I'm sure you may have heard, it is definitely a feminist story, or at least has feminist themes, but it never really feels like it. Honestly, it just feels like a story of the downtrodden trying to overthrow the tyranny. And in this case, the downtrodden just happened to be marginalized women, and the tyranny just happens to be the patriarchy. Likewise, Charlize Theron's character, Imperator Furiosa, is a very feminist character, but again, doesn't really feel like it. She's a strong, powerful badass, and just happens to be a woman. That's it. Overall, I thought the actors did a fantastic job, I really liked Tom Hardy as Max, and I really did not miss Mel Gibson at all. And that's not a shot at Gibson. And like I said, apart from the slight tweak to his origin, he's still the same half-crazed lone wolf that we all know and love. Theron did an outstanding job as Furiosa, she was strong, powerful, determined, and you can tell just by looking in her eyes that this is a person who has seen some shit. Nicholas Holt is wildly entertaining as Nux, you may remember him from the trailer. He's the guy going, what a lovely day! That guy. He was fun. Hugh Keysburn plays the villain, Immortan Joe, and he is one creepy and scary motherfucker. And I didn't realize this until after I had seen the movie, but this is the exact same guy who played Toe Cutter in the first movie. You wouldn't know it by looking at him, but yeah, it's the same guy. The action sequences are Fucking amazing, great chase sequences, explosions of plenty, and some very wild stunts. And from what I hear, most of it was done practically. Miller claims 90% of the stuff in this movie is practical effects. And I can believe it, it certainly looks like it. There are a few places where they of course have to use CG, like Charlie Theron's character is missing most of her right arm and has like a prosthetic arm of some sort, so obviously they have to CG out her real arm, but for the most part, it looks very real. Of course, the vehicles play a huge part in this movie, and they are very creatively designed. I like them a lot. But the vehicle that steals the show is this thing called the Doof Wagon. And basically, what the Doof Wagon is, is a mobile heavy metal concert. Some people take along some CDs or an iPod, but when Joe goes out raiding, he takes the fucking doof wagon. It's got amplifiers stacked up to the sky, bunch of tribal drums in the back, and in front of it all is the captain of the doof wagon, which is this crazy looking fucker with an electric guitar that shoots fire. 
And if that does not make you want to see this movie, then I just don't get you. And while we're talking about music, the score for this movie was also excellent. It was written by a guy who calls himself Junkie XL. Interesting choice for a name. And his music really adds a lot to the action sequences, and he even incorporated some other music to go with his own. There's a bit of Verdi's Dies Irae in here, which was a very nice touch. And if you don't know what that is, just type this into Google. I promise you, you've heard it before. As soon as you hear it, you'll be like, oh yeah, that's what it's called. Really, I don't have much to complain about with this movie. I had to struggle to come up with things that were wrong here, and really all I got are some very minor, nitpicky things. I saw the movie in 3D, and for the most part it does look pretty good, especially considering it's supposed to be a post-conversion, but the very last shot of the final action sequence, for God only knows what reason, this is a point when Miller decided to just get really gimmicky with the 3D and start throwing stuff at the camera. And it just came out of nowhere because the rest of the movie is not like that at all. It's just in that one last shot that you get stuff flying right at your face. It was really weird. And there was also one really odd line of dialogue that stuck out in my head because it sounded kind of stupid. There's this point where Immortan Joe calls for reinforcements from the bullet farm and Furiosa looks out the window of her war rig and says, The bullet farmers... They're coming from the bullet farm. Are they now? Well, wow, I never would have guessed the bullet farmers would be coming from the bullet farm. Thank you, Imperator Obviosa. I don't know where we'd be without you. And while we're talking about that, what exactly is a bullet farm? How does one farm bullets? Is that just like a weird side effect of the radiation? Bullets actually spring out of the soil now? You take a couple of expended shell casings and plant them in the ground, sprinkle some fertilizer on top, water it twice a day, and a few months later, boom, you got yourself a bullet tree. And do all bullets grow on trees? Or are there maybe some bullets that are technically a form of grass? So you gotta harvest like the 7.62 rounds like wheat? And the 30 caliber rounds you pluck out of the ground individually like carrots. Grenades are growing from palm trees like they're fucking coconuts. Make sure you harvest those things before they fall. For obvious reasons. But that's really it. I couldn't think of anything else to complain about. This was just a very solid movie from top to bottom. It's probably the best movie I've seen so far this year. And granted, we aren't even halfway through yet. But still, this was really good. And definitely the best movie in the Mad Max series so far. And I say so far because Miller has confirmed there will be more Mad Max movies, and Tom Hardy has apparently signed on to do at least one more, and I could not be happier. I want more. This is easily worth seeing at any price. I have no reservations about recommending this. If you have not already done so, see this movie at your earliest convenience. That is not a request. And that's all I got to say about Mad Max Fury Road. So until next time, have a lovely day!